Hey, friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 26 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website, where I'll help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, let's dig into FlexTime, which is Logic Pro's time compression and expansion system that allows you to edit the timing of recorded audio. Prior to flex time, recorded audio was basically set in stone. So if we wanted to adjust the timing of a recorded performance, we would have to use either the marquee tool or scissors tool to split up our audio regions and then adjust the timing of the regions individually. From there, we would have to adjust the boundaries of each region and then add crossfades or fades to smooth the transitions between these edits. But thanks to FlexTime, we no longer have to manually chop up our regions if we don't want to. FlexTime allows us to easily adjust the timing of our regions, either by setting our mouse to the Flex tool, with which we can click, hold, and drag on part of our audio region to adjust its timing. Or we could go right up to the region inspector in the inspector, and from there choose a quantize value to quantize our entire audio region too. And as you can see, the timing of our audio region has been adjusted to match that of an eighth note value at this particular tempo of 150 BPM. No need to manually chop up and move regions around. No need to add fades anymore. Flex time takes care of all of these details for us. But there's a lot more to flex time under the hood. So let's really start to dig into the details of flex time for a variety of different tracks in this project that I have here. Let's zoom back out and let's take a quick listen to this project. I pulled some raw audio files from a recording project from last year, and let's just get a sense of what we're gonna be working with, and then we'll dig into flex time. Here we go. So we have drums, we have bass, we have a variety of different guitars, we have piano and some synths at the bottom of the project. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, we could just start quantizing our audio regions. We could start adjusting the timing using the flex mouse tool, but there's a lot more going on under the hood of flex that we can reveal and see just by going up to the show hide flex button at the top of the tracks area and clicking. All right, so now some things have changed. First, we have a flex button that has been revealed in the track headers for each track. When this flex power button is grayed out, that means that we have not enabled flex for our audio track. And when the enable flex power button is blue, that means that we have enabled flex for our track. We can also see there is now a drop down menu in the track header for each track. And when we click on this drop down menu, we can choose between six different flex time algorithms to edit our audio with. We can also enable flex pitch for our audio track, which we'll cover in tomorrow's video. And we can also see that Logic Pro has gone ahead and automatically assigned a flex time algorithm for our audio track based on the audio content when we originally enabled flex. Let's zoom in on our audio region so we can get a closer look at what's going on behind the scenes here. When you enable flex for an audio track for the very first time, Logic Pro analyzes the audio content and looks for what we call transients. Transients are these initial spikes of audio that we can see for each guitar chord that was played. And Logic relies on the transient content to identify where individual notes and beats are performed. Once Logic's done analyzing the audio, it places what we call a transient marker at each individual musically significant moment that it could identify. So the transient markers are these dotted lines that you can see that note each individual guitar chord that's performed. When we're in this flex view in the tracks area or in the audio track editor, we no longer need our mouse tool to be set to that of the flex tool. So we don't have to have the flex tool at all as our left click or command click tool. Instead, we just hover our mouse over the audio region, click and hold and drag to move our audio. If we undo, you can see all the audio has moved back to its original position. So when we click with our mouse, we create what is called a flex marker. And flex markers allow us to play with the timing of our audio. Depending on where you hover your mouse, you'll get different options for creating flex markers. When we hover our mouse in the upper half and click, we create a single flex marker. And again, if we click and hold that single flex marker and start making adjustments, we adjust all audio before and after the transient that we are editing. But if we hover our mouse in the bottom half of the audio region and click, 
we create not one, but three flex markers. So now if we click, hold, and drag on a flex marker in between the other two flex markers, we only adjust the timing of the single transient instead of adjusting all the audio across the entire audio region. And while it looks like that you can only click on transient markers, that's not the case at all. In fact, you can click anywhere you want on an audio region to create flex markers. And from there, you can start editing just by clicking, holding, and dragging on that flex marker. So we should check out what some of this sounds like, right? Let's solo the palm muted guitar and let's take a listen to what this sounds like with the metronome. Here we go. Okay, so it sounds pretty good. Let's now make some edits. I'm gonna create three different flex markers by clicking in the bottom half of the audio region. If I now play with the timing of individual moments, we're gonna get a different audio experience. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? And you can do this across the entire audio region if you want. We can adjust the timing of a flex marker after the fact if we need to. We can remove flex markers individually by double clicking. Or if we change our mouse tool to that of the eraser tool, we can then click, hold, and drag over flex markers to remove them. Additionally, if we create a flex marker, and maybe the flex marker is not in an ideal place, perhaps it's cutting off the waveform as such, you can just hold option and then click and drag your flex marker to adjust its placement in relation to the audio. The ability to reassign a flex marker's placement in an audio region can prove especially helpful with more low end instruments like kick drums or bass guitars. Sometimes transient and flex markers can be placed in the middle of a waveform, which can cause pops and clicks with these low end instruments. So being able to reassign by holding option, clicking and dragging a flex marker allows you to get that added out of the way of the waveform. Right, so let's play around with flex right now for all of our tracks in our project. I'm going to select every single track in the project and enable flex for all these tracks by pressing on the enable flex power button in the track header. Logic once again will analyze all transients for all of our tracks. And if we start to zoom in on some of these tracks, all right, so now we have individual transient markers for all of our audio. We zoom back out, scan around. All right, cool. You can see it's been assigned for everything. Now, a really cool feature of FlexTime is that once it's enabled, and you know that it's enabled either by this power button right here in the track header, or if we hide flex view, we can see right in the region inspector that flex and follow has been turned on. I'm just pressing on the up and down arrows to see. Yep, we've turned on flex for everything. If we take a quick listen, let's hear what this project sounds like at 150 BPM. Okay, so now let's go up to the tempo and see what this sounds like at maybe 100 BPM. Here we go. As you can hear, every region in this project has had its tempo adjusted to match the brand new tempo of 100 BPM. Now reducing the tempo by 50 BPM is significant. And obviously this doesn't sound the most natural, but if we adjust the tempo in subtle ways, we can get away with a couple BPM in either direction and it'll probably sound pretty natural. Let's go down a little further. or go up and type in 160. I mean, that's really not bad at all. And you can see that the colors of the waveforms are changing based on if things are slowing down or speeding up. And if we zoom out a little bit, we can actually set flex to be enabled or disabled on a per region basis. So for example, if we select the second rhythm guitar region and go to the region inspector, we could turn flex and follow off for this region. 
All right, so now this region will remain untouched by flex while we make adjustments to the rest of the track. But just keep in mind that if we play with the tempo at all, that particular region that flex and follow is off for will not change its timing and its performance. That actually sounds pretty cool. I kind of like that effect, but we're going to enable flex for every track in this project. And now we'll dig into the individual flex time algorithms that you can choose from on a per track basis. Again, when you first enable flex time for an audio track, Logic Pro analyzes the audio. And based on that audio, Logic chooses from one of the six different flex time algorithms to edit our audio with. Four of which are for more corrective procedures, while the last two algorithms are more for special effect. First, I'm going to solo these drum tracks right here. And we're going to focus our attention on the flex time mode of slicing, which is the best fit for editing instruments like drums, and drum loops, and percussion. And if we take a listen to these drums, let's now set the quantize value to maybe eighth note. All right, everything has been locked to the grid. Take a listen again. Pretty simple beat, but nonetheless, slicing mode is best fit for percussive elements because with slicing mode, while we're able to move beats around, there's no stretching of the beat that's occurring. The individual beats are not necessarily getting longer or shorter. Instead, it's just their placement that's being changed. Whereas if we choose a different algorithm of any other type, so maybe we select monophonic, we can see that some of the drum beats have elongated in terms of their performance. So if we take a listen now, things start to sound a little weird. That's why we choose slicing for adjusting drum performances. And if there's any sort of gap in between the individual drum hits because we've you know pulled things a little too far, Logic automatically fills the gap for us. Right, it synthesizes the audio and fills in the gap. I'll get rid of these flex markers that I've created. And let's once again, set this to an eighth note value to lock everybody to the grid. Further down, let's choose our bass guitar which is actually a take folder of different audio takes. But if we compress the view here by using our command key and arrow keys on our max keyboard, we can actually use flex on a per take basis. So if I select this take and set quantize to eighth note, I've now quantized this take within the take folder. So we can work our way down and just do it for everybody. Set this to an eighth note value. We're quantizing just these two takes. So we could apply this across all the takes that are relevant to this recording, most of which are this take right here. Right, and if we take a listen, But of course, if we need to fine tune any of these performances, we can get in there and manually create flex markers and make adjustments. Now that sounds pretty good, but personally, I would set the bass guitar to monophonic instead. Monophonic is a best fit for instruments that are playing one note at a time or singing one note at a time. All right, so let's work our way down to some of these guitar tracks. I'm gonna solo some of these guys right here and we'll take a listen. Our next flex time algorithm is polyphonic, which is really a best fit for any instrument that's playing more than one note at a time. So something like rhythm guitars, piano, polyphonic's a more complex algorithm that can handle this kind of content. So we can see for the first guitar, Logic Pro chose polyphonic automatically, but the second one, it chose a different algorithm. So I'm going to choose polyphonic again, 
select both guitar tracks and set the quantize value to quarter note. All right, so minor adjustments. Well, let's make some more extreme adjustments. Oh, went a little too far. Move everybody down. All right, take a listen. Still sounding good. Our next algorithm is rhythmic, which really is a good fit for any rhythmic instrument that has a lot of bouncy activity, like a lot of chords that are playing constantly. So if we take a listen, All right, so let's now quantize the piano by selecting the track header to select every region on this track and go up to quantize in the region inspector and we'll set this to an eighth note value. And let's take a listen. Now you may notice there's a little extra bounciness to the audio that maybe wasn't there before. We can bypass our flex edits by pressing on the enable flex button to power it down. So we can see our adjustments have reverted back to their original position. If we take a listen. If we now re-enable with rhythmic mode enabled. Sometimes rhythmic mode can be a little over eager. So let's try polyphonic and hear how that sounds. All right, so that's sounding a tiny bit better to me, so I'm gonna stick with it. For our last two algorithms, let's go back up to our guitar track here, and we're going to select speed to start out with. Now watch this. If we adjust the speed of some of these guitar chords, one is going to sound sped down because we elongated it, while the other will sound sped up. Check it out. We're just gonna solo just this region. Well, the next chord. That's what speed is all about. It speeds up or slows down based on how you pull and stretch your audio. We undo these. If we now choose Tempophone, this is a kind of mechanical tape sounding effect that you can use on your audio. Once again, let's speed things up and slow things down. Oh, check it out. I accidentally shortened this one transient a little too much. It turned red. And a pop-up warning has occurred in Logic Pro to let me know, hey, do you really want to create a high-speed section? This might cause overloads in your project. So let's cancel. And let's adjust this a little bit. There we go. And let's take a listen. Tempo Phone is definitely a unique special effect, and I really think it's for a specific vision if you have it. And lastly, something that I really dig about flex time is that with flex mode enabled, if you hover your mouse over the boundary of a region that has flex enabled, if you click, hold, and drag, you can adjust the timing of the entire audio region. So we're really stretching things out here for our guitar track. Take a listen. Erase these markers, and maybe I'll split up the region by using my marquee tool. It's amazing what you can get away with when using flex time to adjust the timing of your audio tracks whether it's for corrective procedures or more special effects or adjusting the tempo for every audio track in an entire project, FlexTime allows you to bend and stretch audio at will. All right, now tomorrow, let's dig into Flex Pitch in Logic Pro, which allows you to adjust the pitch of your audio tracks on a note-per-note -note basis. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more. Take care.